If your organization is using Microsoft Teams for meetings, you need to understand some changes to chat conversations. Meeting chat is where some of the greatest value is shared. You need to understand who can access meeting chat, when they can access the chat, and for how long. I pulled together a demo to test the different experiences of meeting chat. I tested different ways a person can be invited to meetings and join the meeting. This is a summary of what I found based on Microsoft Teams features and capabilities as of June 2021. Now if you're watching this a year from now, six months or heck even two weeks from now, you might see a different experience. This is the way with the cloud and software as a service. Make sure you check out my full walkthrough of the demo in another video. Let's start by talking about online meetings. They're a part of our everyday life now. Working in the new normal means that online meetings are the most common way to include people working remotely and in the office when we collaborate. But we really should try to reduce the time we're in meetings and try to collaborate through conversations in our own timing through meeting chat. If your organization uses Microsoft Teams for meetings and collaboration, you need to consider who will have full access to the meeting chat and who will have temporary access. Full access means that you can see the entire history of the conversation. You can join the conversation before the meeting. You can share files and access files others have shared. This is the fullest experience of meeting chat, and you can engage in it before, during, and after the meeting. When you have temporary access to meeting chat, it means you can only join the conversation when you join the meeting. You can only see the chat responses in the conversation from the time you join the meeting till the time that you leave. You can access files that were shared during that time, and you can access the meeting recording. But as soon as the meeting finishes and you leave, you can't see any new posts, and you can't post anything new to the conversation. That's temporary access. Who has full access to the chat? Now that depends on how you were invited to the meeting conversation. The meeting organizer, of course, has full access. They sent the invite, the meeting agenda, and the topics. In fact, when they send the meeting, it starts the conversation. If you're required in the meeting, or you're optional, you have full access too. Required people will add value to the meeting. They share ideas, they present, they discuss, and they decide. Optional people will find value from the meeting. They could add value, but they're not required to attend. When you are required or optional, you'll be able to access the full chat conversation after the meeting, even when you didn't attend. But there is an exception to this. When an external guest is required or optional, they're from outside of the organization. Today, guests have temporary access to the chat. Now, I've got a problem with that. If a guest is invited as required, the organizer determined that the guest will add value to the meeting. They're attending to collaborate, share ideas, and even present. So what's the problem with that? Who has temporary access to the meeting conversation? Sometimes a meeting organizer edits the invite and adds a required or optional person. The invite has already been sent, but the additional people are invited because they will add value to the meeting, or they'll find value. Let's call this group edited invite group. They only have temporary access to the meeting chat, even though the organizer added them to the invite before the meeting. Now I find that strange. The meeting organizer has edited and extended the invite to them. They should have the same experience as those who were included on the original invite. To me, the meeting organizer is like an owner of a file, and the invite is a file. When an organizer adds your name to the invite, the permissions are set. Now maybe this is a meeting option we need to be able to define who has full and temporary access to the meeting conversation when we create and edit the meeting invite. Sometimes a person who has been invited wants to add another person because they think that they can add value. They forward the meeting invite and it is accepted. The meeting organizer is notified about the forwarded invite and receives the RSVP response. A person who accepts a forwarded meeting invite only has temporary access to the meeting chat. Should they have full access? If the organizer accepts the RSVP? Hmm. Meeting organizers may need to make a meeting widely available to people to attend. A good example of this is a webinar or an open meeting. They publish a link that people can use to join the meeting. A person joining a meeting using a link has temporary access to the meeting chat. But that makes sense, given that they don't have an invite in their calendar. Lastly, people are invited to join a running meeting. They can add value to the meeting in that moment of the conversation. They have temporary access to the meeting chat. 
and in some cases, they shouldn't see meeting chat before they joined, but they don't need to see the chat after they leave the meeting. Organising a meeting and giving access to meeting chat should be simple, but it is just another thing for meeting organisers they need to anticipate when planning their meeting. It has become a frustration, especially after the meeting. A meeting organiser or attendee can ask a follow-up question, post a response, discuss tasks, share additional resources. Some of the greatest value comes from the conversation after the meeting, but now it is not immediately clear who will still be included in the conversation. If some of the greatest value is realised in the post-meeting conversation, who do you think should continue to have access? People who have been added to the edited invite should have full access. The meeting organiser added them after the original invite was sent. External guests should, if they were required, but we need more control over this for different situations. A guest may be a collaborator who needs full access to the conversation so that they can continue to collaborate. A guest might also be a presenter and need to respond to a follow-up question or two. A guest might just need temporary access to contribute ideas and receive information during the meeting. Now this is a changing space, and I should start all of my videos now with a statement that the information and opinions that are based on the experience at the time of this recording. Anyway, watch my walkthrough video that goes into a deeper dive about meeting chat access. What has your experience been of this change? How do you think it should work? Share it in the comments below. Do you like this content? Then you know where to find me and you know what to do. We'll see you again soon.